as Paul unfolds this mystery, he also begins to touch upon certain, uh, a major truth, which is election or God's choosing. That means God chose each person ahead of time. It's not just a natural seed, it's a spiritual seed. The children of promise, the people who are responding, they are the ones who will receive the promise and the blessing. They are the ones God is after. The spiritual seed are the people who are responding to the gospel. The purpose of God according to election. Election means God choosing people. Purpose. God is unfolding His purpose through people that He chooses. Election. The purpose of God according to election. What does that mean? It means God foreknew, God foresaw the choice we will make. God's foreknowledge is not a predetermining of your choice. It is a foreknowledge of your choice. So we are not puppets in God's hands. God is not deciding your choice for you. That is still your choice. But He knows ahead of time the choice you will make. He has an encounter with God and He says, God, I will not let you go until you so what's the difference between Jacob and Esau? Jacob went after the spiritual blessing. Esau gave it up for a bowl of porridge. He's asking for spiritual blessing. And that's what God gave him. He says, you'll be Israel. You'll be a prince with God. And God says, I love the man. Though he's not perfect. But I see his heart, what he's after. He's after spiritual. That's a lesson for you and me. See, we are not perfect in our lives. But as God is looking at what our heart is after. I'm after you, God. I want to be a person of stature with you. The purpose of God through choosing. So the purpose of God, which could have unfolded through Esau, now was going to unfold through God for new, purpose of God according to election is already in motion. Is there? Because God for, for new, foreknows, foresees our choice, our decision. Then in the same passage, he brings about another person called Pharaoh. He says, but think about Pharaoh. And this is sometimes startling because he says, God hardened Pharaoh's heart and then he dumped judgment on him. God is sovereign. So he says in verse 19, you will say to me, why does he still find fault? Meaning, why does he punish a person like Pharaoh? For who has resisted, resisted his will? I mean, who can tell God what to do? And then he gives us a picture of a potter working on clay. He says, God is sovereign. And just as the potter decides what he wants to do with the clay, and the clay can't say, why did you make me round and not tall or whatever. The, clay, the, the vessel can't tell the potter what he, what he has to do. God is sovereign. He decides what he wants. And he makes some who are, he refers to them as vessels of wrath. That means they end up receiving God's judgment. Others become vessels of mercy. They receive God's compassion and mercy. God has a remnant. This is in verse 5 and 6. He says, even so then at this present time, verse 5, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. So now he's continuing that thought of election. That God has chosen some people by His grace and it is purely by grace. He says, look, God has a remnant. In verse 1, he has pointed to himself. I, Paul, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Hebrew. I'm of the tribe of Abraham. Like me, God has a chosen some of these Jewish people at this present time, and they have been chosen by grace. Reconcile God's choosing and our decision. There are, th these are two sides to the same coin. Both sides are equally important. And so on one side is God's election. On the other side is your decision, your choice. 